Hello everyone, my name is Jagdidi Sharma and welcome to our Assign Academy. So guys, today's topic of discussion is going to be CSIR UGC Net Solution for the December 2019 uh, CSIR examination. Okay, so let me also quickly tell you that I'm also an educator on the Unacademy platform. So if you want, you can visit the profile, you can check out the special classes, which is basically a form of uh, free content. Okay, and also you can visit the free video courses. So these are some uh, free uh, ways of uh, providing content from the Unacademy. And definitely if you like the content, then you can go for the plus subscription. And while taking the plus subscription, don't forget to use the code JAGS with the S. It is going to get, give you a 10% discount. Alright, so let's now begin with the first question for today. So this is the first question that I have taken up from the CSIR net exam to December 2019. Alright, so the question is asking the major product formed in the following reaction is so if you look at the reagents over here, this is our chloroform in the presence of a base. This is used in the first step. In the second step, it is hydrogen peroxide in the presence of a base again, sodium hydroxide. Now the thing is, if you uh, look at looking at the reagent, it's very easy to remember that when we are taking chloroform and a base combination and the combination of a base, then what we are going to get is we are going to get our dichlorocarbene and how is it formed let me quickly show you so for example this is our chloroform right over here it is called alpha elimination all right it is called alpha elimination which means both the hydrogen and the chlorine are getting eliminated from the same carbon to give us the dichlorocarbene now this is not a lone pair guys, it is just a pair of electron but the carbene is electron deficient. Okay, so this is the first step of the reaction. Now what? Now if we are having a molecule like this, then definitely the oxygen is going to assist in the attack, in the electrophilic attack from this position just like this. Okay. And what will happen? We are going to get the intermediate like this. There is a double bond over here. Aromaticity is lost. Okay. You can just write it like this. And now see what happens is carbene is basically neutral. So if electron density is attacking over carbene, it is going to get a negative charge. All right. So now what we are going to do is we are just going to remove this proton for the aromaticity and we are going to write it like this. So basically uh, I am just directly writing plus H plus minus H plus which means proton exchange has taken place. Alright, proton exchange between this carbon as well as the carbene carbon which has finally taken up the proton like this. Alright, so now what can we do? Okay, so this is the riemer tiemann reaction and what happens in the, in the next step is we are again having a base which is our OH minus. So it is going to attack one of the, uh, this carbon and remove one of the chlorine groups ultimately leaving us with this OH group, the Cl and the hydrogen. Now the thing is See, in some of the mechanisms, see, we already have a base over here. So you can write OH as well as you can write O- minus because in the presence of the base, it is going to exist as O- minus only, right? So in most of the mechanism, you are going to see this intermediate with a negative oxygen. Basically, the phenolate ion you are going to see. All right, so you can rather write it as O- minus also. Okay, so now what is going to happen is, This proton will be taken up by the base and this is how we are going to eliminate. There is going to be the ethyl in all of all of these molecules, right? So definitely there is going to be this oxygen and a carbonyl group is introduced at the ortho position to our 
phenolic OH group. Now the thing is the question is still asking in the next step it is still giving hydrogen peroxide in NUH and this step guys is the Dakin oxidation. It is the Dakin oxidation the first step was the riemer tiemann reaction. It is the first step is the riemer tiemann which we have already done and this is the product of the riemer tiemann reaction. Now what to do next is in the presence of a base there is H2O2 like this right half open book structure so in the presence of the base the OH- is going to take up the proton and it is going to give the peroxide anion so the peroxide anion attacks over the carbonyl carbon one of the bond pi bond is going to open up and we are going to result into a species like this so guys I hope that you will be able to realize or notice that this reaction is very similar to the bare villager oxidation isn't it this is very very similar to the bare villager oxidation let me just write OH so now what happens is when the bond falls back like this the carbon is going to bond is going to migrate and the OH minus leaves like this so if you want to write the product we can write it like this basically what has happened okay so what has happened outside the ring let us just write it so here this carbon is directly going to be connected to this electrophilic oxygen and then what after it we are having our carbon dioxide as well as H2O so basically this is what we are having alright so this is going to be O minus okay sorry just a second it is the oxygen is still connected to the carbon right so it is connected to the carbon over here and this is what we are getting okay so only the OH minus is leaving from this one alright now <clears throat> again we are having OH minus so this OH minus can now attack over the carbonyl carbon the bond may open up and fall back and ultimately the O minus is what we are getting over here so this is the oxy anion that we are getting like this alright and after hydrolysis it is going to give a after hydrolysis after taking up the proton it is going to give a product like this so basically guys the Dakin oxidation is where we prepare from the aryl aldehydes or ketone to give us the phenol okay so we started from the from this uh, molecule right over here and we did the riemer tiemann reaction to get this product firstly okay and the second process this process is the Dakin oxidation which is very very similar to the bare villager reaction it is just a variant okay in here we are specifically using the aryl aldehydes or ketones and after the Dakin oxidation we are getting our phenols okay so this is the Dakin oxidation and our answer looks like option number one yes the OH group is close to this one not the ethyl okay so this would be wrong if I write it close to ethyl over here similarly there is no COH yes so option number three and four are incorrect two is also incorrect because the OH the incoming OH is going to be close to op, uh, the first OH group which was para to ethyl okay so this is the answer now let's look at another question so this question is asked based on the Hammett reaction constant so guys let me tell you one thing uh, if you have not yet uh, studied this uh, concept then you can study this from determining determining reaction mechanisms determining reaction mechanism and this is a chapter from Claydon chemistry and I hope everyone of you have the PDF at least of this book Claydon alright so this is chapter number okay so this is chapter number 39 alright so you can study the Hammett reaction uh, relation constants from chapter number 39 now what the, uh, what are we going to study in Hammett principle there are going to be two constant one is the substitution constant which is our Sigma and the other is the reaction constant which is Rho so now the question is only asking about Rho true statement regarding the Hammett reaction constant Rho for the following transformation given in the equation A and B is 
okay so let me quickly tell you just a very short thing all right that how are we how are we going to find ki rho is positive or negative how are we going to find that that we are going to find based on the mechanism all right so this is the reaction constant right which means it is going to determine the mechanism so if a mechanism is giving electron density to benzene for example it is increasing the electron density electron density increases then our rho is positive and who is the electron density going to increase on definitely the benzene nucleus but if the electron density decreases then the rho is going to be negative all right so let's see so for example if you if i give you uh, an example of electrophilic substitution reaction like this so it goes through a sigma complex which we also call the valent intermediate okay so there is a positive charge over this carbon so definitely if we are following this mechanism then the rho value or the reaction constant value is going to be negative why because it is decreasing the electron density on the benzene ring okay so let's see what is this reaction doing so basically guys uh, in this reaction it is our ester hydrolysis basically okay so in this reaction what is happening the oh minus is going to attack over the carbonyl carbon and it is going to produce the tetrahedral intermediate like this o minus and oet and there is going to be our oh so basically just looking at this intermediate we can say that it is not at all electron deficient the benzene ring is not at all electron deficient if we compare this from simple acid or ester the simple acid or ester what does it do it takes up the electron density from benzene okay and this is the resonance structure like this co minus and oet so basically it makes the electron it makes the benzene electron deficient the simple ester but we are going to talk about we need ki what is happening in the reaction mechanism this is the intermediate and is this intermediate making the benzene ring more electro electron rich or at least not making it electron deficient so definitely guys we can see that in this case of ester hydrolysis the reaction mechanism definitely is not decreasing the electron density from benzene so we can say that rho is going to be positive it is going to be positive why because it is not removing the electron density just like it did in the electrophilic substitution yes also what is going to be the effect of rho or basically what is going to be the value of rho when there are two carbons or basically two methylene groups in between the benzene ring and the ester so now guys this is again the electron richness is basically decreasing with the distance so guys if the oh minus is going to attack over this carbon it is two carbons far away from the benzene ring so the uh, you know effect is less pronounced okay so even if the rho is positive for this one it is going to have a lower value as compared to this right so we can say that equation a has a higher value as compared to equation b and both of them are going to be positive because ultimately the process is the same both of them are what ester hydrolysis all right so we can say that so guys the answer is option number 3 rho is a which is larger positive value than for b okay so answer is option number 3 and i hope that you got it or basically we have we have already discussed in the plus course theek hai so if you want you can visit that class as well so let's now move over the other question so this is again one more question which was asked in december 2019 exam so let me quickly show it to you the structure of the compound which displays the following spectral data is so the ir data is given the hnmr data is given as well as the c13 nmr data is given so let me tell you honestly guys that only from the only from the ir and nmr data it is good enough for you to find out what is going to be the product okay so the first thing is the ir value is given to be 1690 okay 
So if you have a little idea about IR spectroscopy, you would know that the ester is basically going to have a value higher than 1720 okay centimeter inverse it cannot have a value as low as 1690 it can only be uh, uh, ascribed to a ketone like this so this is the first discrimination that we have done right over here okay so let's see what we are going to get so this is this value is very very useful all right so now let's check out that uh, we are having ester in option number one so this is not going to be the answer ester in option number two so we are not having an ester what is option number three and four it is a ketone group and the ether like this so now we have to check whether the ketone and the ether are ortho or para to each other how are we going to check that let's see so now, uh, guys now looking at the HNMR value we can see they go 2.8 is for a singlet three hydrogens which means if it is a singlet and it is for three hydrogens, three hydrogens are present in a methyl group. And if it is a singlet, which means it is our isolated methyl group, which means it, does, it is not connected to other carbon. That is why we are getting a singlet. Okay. Similarly, if we are having the value 3.8, again it is singlet and three hydrogens. So this also means that we are having another methyl group. It is isolated, not connected to any other carbon that is by singlet but it is connected to a electron uh, electronegative atom for example oxygen so we can confirm the presence of a methyl group which can be over here and the presence of a OCH3 group all right so this is definitely our OCH3 and OCH3 over here all right so again we can neglect we can cancel out this because here the oxygen is not directly connected to CH3 okay so this is how we are going to proceed the other thing that we get to see that 6.9 and 7.8 so basically only two values are given for the aromatic hydrogens and when is that possible when is that possible that only two values are given when these two hydrogens are at least the same or basically we are having the substituents in the para position like this why can I say that because then there will be a sigma plane passing through the molecule like this and this hydrogen and this hydrogen would be the same they are only going to get one value similar for this okay so we confirm from these two values that we are getting a doublet and both the values are same okay so we are only having two type of equivalent hydrogen so the 6.8 6.9 value is going to be for this one because it is connected to oxygen and ox oxygen is electron releasing right so a lower value and the 7.8 is going to be closer to the carbonyl group which is basically electron withdrawing and that is why a higher value and the value is like really huge 1 ppm uh, difference which is a good enough difference for the adjacent carbons adjacent hydrogens okay so this is because of the different groups which are connected here the oxygen releasing group hai, electron releasing group and here the carbon is electron withdrawing group okay so our answer is option number three we can just confirm by looking at the IR as well as the NMR value you have to be good at reading the NMR uh, data because it is most widely used all right so guys uh, this is this was the question for today's session and I'll take your leave for today and I'm going to bring more videos like this. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up. And also please share it with your friends. And also subscribe if you haven't yet already. And guys, I will in the description box below, I will give the link to my Telegram channel. Alright, so you can uh, come up and join the Telegram channel for more discussion on CSIR net questions as well as notes. Alright, and what are the important books to study from? Alright, thank you so much for coming up. I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone.